Thanks, Sharon. And Rose, again, thank you. And thank you for your support and all you do for the home medical equipment industry. Um, this association is really one of the um, best organizations within our industry and always looking to help the members. And we really appreciate your time today to spend listening to our session. And today, we want to welcome everybody to the second session and the collection series. In our last session, the collection policy boot camp, we covered why your company should have a collection policy, how to get started and some best practices you can use. And if you missed that webinar, uh, it is posted on the MAMES website. Uh, and for the uh, Southwest Mesa members, if you can contact Jim and Rose at info at mames.com, you can get access to that site so you can um, go back and review that particular session. Uh, today, we're gonna be discussing how you can start building your new collections culture. And next month, we're gonna wrap up with creating a successful call center or CSR team. So let's get started. So the agenda today, we will kick off the session talking about the importance of your company's culture, how you can create a winning culture, and some best practices, and how you can keep the momentum um, going while you're trying to change your culture. So the, the importance of company culture. Um, you know, your company culture defines for you and all others how your, organization, how your organization does business, um, how your organization interacts with one another, and how the team interacts with your customers, partners, and suppliers. Having a defined company culture gives your team something to be excited about. It comprises the beliefs and behaviors that influence how employees and leadership interact with one another and how they handle business transactions. It embodies the core values of your company and each team member member companies with strong cultures tend to be higher performers company culture can be formal or informal in fact many new or small organizations don't document their culture until they have reached some level of success so to start we wanted to just take a look at your culture. Do you have a formal culture? Which means, uh, do you have documented set of values, beliefs, and behaviors that guide the activities, your employees, um, just like your mission and vision, um, so that everybody knows exactly what they're responsible for and what they're doing, what the vision of the company is. If you're thinking you don't have a culture, all you need to do is listen to your staff. Whenever you hear that's the way we do things around here, that's your culture speaking. Your culture de de and determines how things get done in an organization. So just take a minute and answer if you have, um, you know, you feel like you have a formal culture or not. And an example, if your culture is not reaching its goals for collection recovery, your company may need to shift the way your employees think and act meaning you probably need to look at changing your culture. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So, Sharon, do we have a response? Uh, yes, just a moment. We have a few, few more people still voting, so I don't want to cut anybody off. Um, okay, let's go ahead and I'll share the results now. So, of the people who were who voted, 69% said they did have formal company culture, 13% said no, and 19% weren't sure. Okay. So this will help in establishing what a culture should look like within your organization based on your mission and, um, and your priorities. So I think everybody has heard this definition of insanity. Uh, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Uh, in order to get different results, your organization must shift the way your employees think and act. So benefits of a strong culture. According to Peter Ashworth, executive and life coach and CEO of Live Possible, um, says, 
In addition to financial advantage, there, is, there are many benefits to having a positive culture within your company. These include good, transparent, open communication that help departments and employees work and, and collaborate better together towards the achievement of your company goals. A shared vision and clear mission across the entire organization leads employees working together to a common goal. And strong corporate culture of respect among employees creating, you know, enhanced mutual trust, cooperation across the business is obviously more effective. Uh, less internal politics, um, more efficient decision making, fewer disagreements, and a common vision across all the leaders, a strong sense of brand across the organization. And this obviously will help you reduce employee turnover with um, certainly a definitive financial and operation advantage that's gonna help you achieve your goals. So those are just some of the few benefits that we look at in creating a strong culture within your organization. So let's take a moment and uh, talk about what culture is and what it isn't. Um, you know, according to Peter Lepic, author of a um, blog article, Culture Versus Policy, policy is what a company says it will do through training, written procedures, and the executive's public statements. Culture, on the other hand, is what a company actually encourages its employees to do throughout, through formal and informal incentives, you know, the messages, subtle um, about which policies are most important, the decisions of hiring and promoting and where executives both focus their time and attention. So looking at the difference, it's critical to make the distinction. So how does your culture impact collections? Some organizational leaders think the culture can be dictated from the top. Culture, have, however, cannot be dictated any more than one can dictate how someone feels. You know, you can't tell someone how they feel or how they should feel about you, but your behavior will definitely impact their opinion. The same applies to leaders. They cannot dictate culture, but they can certainly play a role in shaping it. So two core attributes here. Um, you know, organizational culture can really shape expectations and behaviors um, by you know, what is perceived to be important, which is the value of the organization, the values of the organization rather, and what is thought to be true, the beliefs, what, what one believes about the organization. Since actions are speak louder than words, management must demonstrate what is important. From a customer's point of view, um, how do they treat customers? Are they helpful? Are they respectful? Do they know how to help those who can't pay up front? From an employee's point of view, how much effort do they take in helping their employees? Do they delegate without, but withhold the authority to get the job done? Or are they sharing their skills with their employees? So managers really have a key role to play in this. Your policies and procedures must be compatible with your culture in order to have a positive impact on your collection results. For example, if an HME provider who sells directly to a patient, you may have some really stringent credit guidelines versus perhaps a, an infusion provider who's supporting end of life scenarios. These things are very critical in how you set up, how you follow, and what we were discussing last time, as well as how you're receiving what those policies and procedures should be and what's relevant, relevant to your business. As we discussed in the last section, documenting procedures help drive results you want. By taking the time to outline your workflow, your culture and collection policy will serve as a compass for your collection efforts and help ensure consistent um, approach throughout your operation as it re relates to collections. So clarifying roles by assigning employees specific tasks and objectives in the workflow, you'll streamline the process and improve your staff's efficiency and accountability. 
and providing consistency, the policy should guide every employee to make the same decision in the same scenario, which will eliminate any confusion and help reach your collection goals. For the best results, your culture and policy and procedures need to be in alignment. So in thinking about that, we want to take a next, the next um, poll and we want to ask the question, what percentage of your procedures are in alignment with your culture and collection policies? When you think about how you approach collections within your organization, your policy, state employees are responsible for collecting payment information up, sent, up front, as an example. Your procedures and outlines, uh, your procedures outline where your staff should enter the information in the system, and at the end of the day, you coach the employees who um, don't collect the information and reward the, you know, the employees that do. All your actions in this example are in alignment. Um, indicate the percentage of your procedures that are in alignment with your policy. And if you don't have a written policy, your answer should obviously be A. Remember your culture, whether formal or informal, need to align with your collection policy and procedures. If they're in alignment, your employees will have a guide to know what behaviors and activities are expected. If they're not in alignment, you'll want to spend some more time before the you know the year gets too far underway to consider what shifts you need and want to encourage in how your employees will think and act in regard to your collection policies. Sharon, what was the percentage results here? Hey, <clears throat> hey uh, it looks like we had 33% that were at 50% or less. 7% were at 50 to 64%, 33% were 65 to 79%, 27% were at 80 to 89%, and no one thought they were 90% or more in alignment. And I think the conclusion here is that everybody can see that there is room for improvement in looking at your policies and procedures and making sure that they are in alignment with your um, processes. So looking at your mission, your, um, in making sure that everything that you do is in sync throughout the workflow process and being able to document that is really critical in this process. So this transition is us into creating a winning culture. And Sharon's going to bring us through this next session. Sharon? Okay. Thanks, Bruce. And with the right mindset and attitude, you could create a workplace that is not only fun to be in, but also filled with hard workers who boost your business and create a positive environment. According to Jared Atchison, a contributor to business.com, transforming the workspace culture is one of his top four tips on how to motivate your employees. A recent survey showed that 58% of professionals would leave their job because of off negative office politics. And why is that? Well, it's because office politics affects so many aspects of the work culture. The amount of work you put in, the kind of attitude your employees have, and ultimately, employee retention. Many people feel it's your job as an employer to make sure your employees feel safe, cared about, and welcome while they are at your company. Okay, next uh, slide. Okay, uh, there's usually a good reason why you decided you wanted to change, make a change in your organization. Maybe you're seeing moves in the competition. Maybe you're experiencing pricing pressures or seeing a rise in your patient AR. Whatever it is, there's usually a sense of urgency to move quickly to improve results. Let me just share an example with you. I've been fortunate enough to be involved in culture change projects in three different departments. The most drastic was when I worked in the credit card center for British Petroleum. 
the organization had started a 24-7 call center with our new communication software, which sent data from the gas pump to the service station to our data center. Several equipment vendors were involved, so we had an implementation team at each of the installations. As you can imagine, if the data communication stopped, the station could have a variety of issues, like not being able to pump gas, not being able to sell food in the convenience store, or not being able to submit their daily paperwork. So my team of experienced CSRs had to troubleshoot quickly to determine the root cause of the problem so they knew which group of technicians to send out. Since this data communication was critical, Amico wanted to empower the team to streamline their workflow, be involved in the hiring process to make sure any new team members brought in would fit into the new culture, and to provide peer feedback for reviews. For me, it was a great learning experience. So once you have formalized your team's culture, collection policy, and collection procedures, you'll want to use some of the steps we use for spreading the word. Effectively communicate your culture and collection policy to establish accountability at every level of your organization. You'll want to prioritize your company's results and you'll want to monitor your progress and celebrate those short-term wins. So let's dig into each of these in more detail. Well, since I'm in marketing, let's start with communication. The most common mistake in trying to bring about change is to have a leadership team define it, talk about it once, and then check it off their to-do list. You have to remember you're providing everyone in your team with a roadmap as to how they're going to be a part of something exciting. Describe how you envision the future and make sure you match your message to your audience. You may need to adjust the tone, the pace, and the style for different groups. So make sure your communications align with your culture. If your organization is more formal and structured, your communication should be too. If you're a smaller organization, and your environment is more casual and relaxed, your tone should reflect that. In our case, we had three different presentations, one for the leadership team, one for the CSRs, and one for our HR and other support team. Because as you can imagine, each of those groups were interested in different information. So you can't just hand out your vision and expect yourself to understand what you're trying to accomplish. Your team spent time thinking and discussing the changes you want to make. So your staff will also need time to understand why your culture must change and the changes you want to make. Since culture change is so important to your company's success, you should reinforce the changes often and publicly recognize individual teams or groups that demonstrate what your culture is and what you aspire it to be. You might even consider formal training session or team meetings. In my scenario, our leadership team went through training with the staff, and we had team meetings every other week to discuss what was working and what still needed to change. Because it's hard to get everything to change the way you want it in one step. Change has its challenges, so the meetings provided a good opportunity to keep our team motivated. You also want to demonstrate your values by walking your talk. Since employees listen more to what you do than to what you say, your leadership team should consist of strong cultural fits. They are going to be the face of your company and will need to show others how to live the corporate culture every day. And establishing accountability at every level. You have to evaluate your culture and hold all of your employees accountable for living it every day. For example, your credit standards and collection procedures should be the same for all of your customers so your employees know exactly what they can and cannot do. Any exceptions should be few and far between. Next, you'll want to prioritize your results. We recently went through this process at Allegiance Group. We started by identifying the top three to five results we wanted to be our focus for this year. 
and we pick the activities that will have the most impact on our company. The authors of the Oz Principle, Connors and Smith, recommend involving your staff in order to help determine, one, what actions employees should stop doing, what actions they need to start taking, and what actions they should continue doing to reach their results. For example, when reviewing your workflow, you might decide that your employees should stop telling employees they don't need to worry about paying their bill now. They need to start collecting payment information up front and discussing the patient pay portion before the service is performed. And they need to continue serving as a resource for your customers by answering any questions they may have. You should also consider creating team-based results. Your employees will learn the importance of putting the organization's interests before their own. For example, you might consider using day sale outstanding or DSO or your collection recovery percentage as a company-wide result to help focus your staff's efforts. Lastly, you'll want to monitor your companies and make sure that your results are improving. And you want to make sure your results are driving the right activities. Sustaining change can be challenging, so you want to plan for and create short-term wins so you can celebrate those who are excelling. Also, take the time to encourage those who are just short of their goals and make sure you sit down with those who miss them. Another way to monitor progress is to just watch how your employees respond when an issue arises. Can they resolve it without getting their manager involved? Are they running into roadblocks? How they address issues should improve as time goes on. Recognize you, have, you may have employees who struggle with accepting change. Turn those negatives into a positive. You may need to coach them to make certain they understand why the changes are necessary, or they may need a job challenge to get motivated. If you ignore them, their behavior will eventually have a negative impact on the whole team and make it harder to incorporate the changes that you want to make. Talk to your employees so you can ensure their values and beliefs are aligning with the companies. Here's a quick little sample. Your, your goal is to have your staff see how quickly, to see how their daily actions help achieve the company's results. Each of your employees should be able to explain their contribution. For example, I was a collector, so I should be able to fill in this blank. My job is to collect blank percent of our patient pay AR, and here's how I do it. And they should be able to tell you how they do it. I collect payment information from each patient up front and store it in our system. That way, when the invoice is generated, we can immediately process the payment. When we collect the balance without any additional work, we collect more cash faster, which improves our collection percentage and our cash flow. And so this way, they're seeing and understanding how their daily actions are contributing to the balance bottom line. And so now Bruce will share some ideas on how you can keep up the momentum throughout this process. Thanks, Sharon. So how do you maintain momentum? You probably think motivation. Motivating sounds like an easy enough task until you remember that everyone is different and can be motivated in vastly different ways. Here are some ideas that you can use that don't really require even involving cash. And this is a list that comes from Alice Williams' Small Business Daily. And one of them is just simply challenging your employees. If you have a team member you have team members, rather, who are not your top performers, but are good at their job. Consider delegating some challenging projects or tasks to them to boost their performance. It, it sounds counterintuitive, I know, but employees will respond positively to the trust that you put in them. Another, offer constructive feedback regularly. I know a lot of us do that. 
But if you're not offering candid, constructive feedback regularly, now is a perfect time to start. And don't be afraid to offer both negative and positive feedback. Your staff will feel valued if you take the time to provide them with the feedback that helps them grow professionally. Another idea is to provide opportunities to volunteer in the community, a great motivator. Some people find great joy in serving others. We're in a service industry that really fosters that. The opportunity to give back to their local community while getting paid can be a huge motivator. Um, it offers them a change of scenery and shows them that their company cares about their community as well. Furthermore, volunteering can help build new skills um, and help develop leadership in individuals and step into leadership roles that maybe uh, you're wanting to prepare, prepare your employees for. If you're struggling to find ways to give your team growth opportunities, help them learn and grow professionally through their volunteer efforts. Perhaps one of the referral partners that you have will give your employees a better understanding of your business and the industry that you serve, as an example. And then obviously caring about them as people. A good manager is one that can walk the line between treating them professionally and showing that they care about them as people, not just as a worker. You'll be surprised how far a small gesture can go, such as just shouting out, you know, the vacation an employee is excited about or taking them out to lunch for their birthday. Lots of different ideas in that area. Then another one, especially today, incentivizing them through social media. Social media is a great way to shout somebody's achievement to the, to the world. Social media, uh, when done correctly, can remind your staff your company's missions and your, your company's mission statement and so celebrate their you know key key milestones and accomplishments publicly and provide to recognize them and, and reward them and certainly good recognition recognition for your top performers. So how do you reinforce this change? Leadership. Most people could care less about what you say. What's important is what you do. And we've heard that theme throughout this presentation today. Your management team needs to set the way. Predictive Index, company that focuses on talent optimization, found that roughly 80% of the workers agree that a quality boss possesses a possesses a good work ethic, is honest, confident, and makes good business decisions. If you want a productive, intelligent, hardworking employee, treat them with respect and show sincere care and concern. Clear communication is critical. Email messages on a regular basis to your staff that reinforce your organization's culture is one way to do this. It may be an excerpt from your goals and incentives or details on a project recently uh, completed. Um, and certainly anything that's in tune with your, your company's culture to reinforce that. Speak When speaking to your staff one-on-one, speak their language at their level and it'll certainly make them feel more comfortable and show that you respect them. Management policies and procedures. Hiring process should outline the, your, or your hiring process should outline the attitudes you're looking for in a new employee. This is why behavioral interviewing questions become and are becoming more and more popular. Companies want to know if a candidate is willing to live by the company's culture as well as having the skill set company needs. Right measurements. Make sure that you have the right measurements in place to track the activities that drive results, the KPIs that we talked about before. You have all experienced setting a team goal and creating behavior that's not expected. And, you, and 
unfortunately, take unintended consequences. A good example of this is everybody is familiar with uh, Wells Fargo and sending, and sending people in um, you know, illegally to set up, you know, checking accounts. Uh, make certain you're not surprised by the unintended consequences by certain goals that you're setting up. You know, share the successes with the team that you are working towards those goals collectively. And make sure that those are are set with the right intention, and then reinforce the values and beliefs. Find a few change agents in your organization to help you make forward progress. Every company has respected leaders, formal and informal. Identify those people. Make them ambassadors of your culture. Make sure these people are involved and part of the process so they can help you um, uphold the culture that you're trying to establish. Encourage them to align their work and management styles so that they can keep demonstrating what it looks like to live the culture that you're trying to encourage. Make it a point to walk around the office every day and thank people for their contribution. This all sounds very you know, common sense, but you'd be surprised how much this is missed in our operations on a daily basis because we get caught up in everything else. So that leads us to the pitfalls. Inconsistent leadership behavior. This includes all types of behavior, such as fairness and willingness to address employees that are not performing to expected standards. This, you know, especially when you're letting something continue to go on and on and you're not addressing, this can be a huge um, disincentive to your employees. Certainly look out for the fact that you're growing too fast or too slow. This can create other problems from an administrative standpoint. Your, your company's outgrowing your administrative staff. You know, and certainly you don't want to expedite things and just set aside values as an excuse to survive. You need to maintain the values of your organization regardless of the circumstance. Um, and then not maintaining that small company feel. As a company grows, it should consider organizing around small groups, perhaps, with responsibility for the results they deliver um, by branch or division, et cetera. Uh, this really helps maintain that small company feel and that intimacy and certainly the ability to go ahead and help motivate those teams within those organizations. Outside leadership, be careful. Making certain every employee is committed to the company's existing culture. Uh, this is particularly true of leaders, uh, outside leaders. They can disrupt culture if they're not committed to the same healthy culture that you're trying to um, attain. And ineffective measurements. We've talked about this already, but measurements that focus on the wrong indicators fail to learn an organization of the right, you know, imp impending problems. So you need to make sure that you've got your, your focus on the right KPIs. So whether you have a culture that's formal or informal, measuring the health of the, the culture requires exploring how your, how your employees feel. How do you know if employees feel empowered and happy? Well, here's some questions that you can ask. Do, do you feel as an employee that you've been trained adequately to help your customers? Are you encouraged to search for new ideas and solutions? Do you have the tools needed to help your customers? And are you contributing to the company's results? The task of nurturing and changing the culture is important. If you let your culture shape itself, you'll have one more unknown to address. To help your staff collect more patient balances, Take the time to make certain that your culture, policy, and procedures are in alignment. This alignment will remove any confusion surrounding collection activities. It will increase the effectiveness of your employees and result in improved bottom line. 
this concludes this section of the of the session. Next time, we're going to be talking about creating a successful CSR and call center team. That session is going to be March 13th, but we've left plenty of time for questions because we've covered a lot of material here. So we'll open it up to questions. If you've used the, um, the notes section in the, in the session queue, please let us put questions there and we'll answer them. Sharon, do we have any questions in the, in the notes queue? Um, not at this moment. Okay. And this session for review will be available on the MAMES website as well. If you have any questions and would like to get into any of the detail further, please contact us. The email number or the email is up on the screen. We'd happy to assist or help you in any way we can. Hopefully this was helpful for you. And I just want to mention that we do have a copy of the slide deck. Uh, it's under handouts in your control panel, so you can go there and download the presentation, or you can listen to it in full on the MAMES website. Fantastic. Okay. And I don't see okay. any other questions coming through the queue. Nope, I don't either at this time. Well, thank you for joining us with this presentation, and we look forward to uh, seeing you next month as we wrap up our three-part series on how you can uh, create a successful CSR collection team. And as Bruce mentioned, if you have any questions uh, or need any additional help, just feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time today.